Catherine Vaccarello and her two daughters were killed by a car. After a family reunion in New York, Kathy, her husband John and the two children walked to the junction to cross the road. A car shot the lights at 72 miles an hour. John was knocked unconscious. Conchetta, his daughter, was thrown 50 feet onto the pavement. Maria was scooped up into the windscreen. Kathy, John's wife, was trapped under the car. The driver is now in prison serving three life sentences for murder. He never stopped. He went for 180 feet with my baby right next to him because she broke the windshield. And she was the flower in her hand, that's what they told me. Uh, he carried her for about 180 feet, and my wife was underneath the car. And he couldn't steer the car. That's why he stopped. He went against the pole. That's what they told me. That's why we never forgive him. There's nothing else than a, a lousy murder. That was plain murder. There was no accident. If anybody come at me with a gun or a knife and try to harm what's mine, which is my family, I will fight like, like, like a lion. I can't fight a car that big or that small. I can't. We build safer cars and safer roads, but there are still crashes and the figures are rising. Why? Research points to a dangerous possibility. The drivers actually like to take risks. I believe there's risk in just about every aspect of our lives and particularly so on the road. Taking a risk is doing something that carries with it the probability of an, out of, of an adverse outcome. So if enough people take enough risks, there will be, um, inevitably, there will be accidents. Hey! The emergency services are constantly practicing for the effects of risk-taking on the roads. Research suggests that each driver has their own level of acceptable danger and that they will drive up to that limit. If cars and roads are made safer, people will simply drive more dangerously. I believe everyone has in their heads a risk thermostat. Um, some have them set very high, your hell's angel racing car driver perhaps. Others have them set very low, your archetypal, timid and cautious little old lady. So we all take risks. Every time you get into a car, you are potentially risking your life, whether you're going to do the, the, the weekly shopping or get to the dentist or get to the church on time. Depending on the, on, on the importance of getting there on time, you're likely to take more risks or fewer. And then if the setting of the thermostat gets out of balance with our perception of safety or danger, then there's a behavioral response that reestablishes the level of danger that we were originally content with. So, for example, if you fit a car with better brakes and there's no adjustment to the setting of the thermostat, then people drive faster, start braking later, the potential safety benefit gets consumed as a performance benefit. Engineers and safety experts are concerned that this disregard of danger is undermining their efforts to protect drivers.
risk theory contradicts the idea that a tougher car will keep you alive longer on the road. After Jeeps and Range Rovers, the ultimate four-wheel drive has arrived. The Hummer was built for the United States military to use in war. It's now engaged in the battle of the roads. People manufacture and purchase cars with all kinds of newfangled safety equipment. And this car is another example of a machine that superficially looks like an immortality apparatus. If we were to assume that everybody in the United States had a vehicle like this one, uh, what would happen? Now, undoubtedly people are better protected uh, in the sense that given they have a collision at a certain speed, certain miles per hour, the chances of surviving would be greater. There's no question about that. But what would happen as a result? People would, in the first place, be tempted to drive a little faster because they now know that they're better protected. Secondly, they would also be tempted to drive more. And especially, they would be tempted to drive more under adverse weather conditions now that they know they're better protected. So, in fact, the car manufacturer offers a way to the driver to protect himself or herself from the consequences of bad driving. And to protect people from the consequences of risky behavior is to provoke risky behavior. potential for things going wrong keep increasing and yet our own sense of belief is that because we've got more technology things are going to be better. Technology's got a hidden price that as cars become more complicated and more efficient and more comfortable drivers start to kind of lose their driving intelligence. So the sense of protection and invulnerability that we get from the car really turns us into quite dangerous people. You know we're people who feel like we're not going to get hurt and we're in charge of a big powerful object. What they should have instead of an airbag there is a, a spike or a bayonet coming out of the middle of the steering wheel. I bet you'd drive a lot more careful now if, if you had a spike sticking out there wouldn't you? You could put the petrol tank in the in the front of the car where the bumper is there. I bet you drive a lot more careful then if you knew that that's where your petrol was. So we're building safer cars, but it's not improving the driving. Imagine two cars that are identical in all respects, but one of them is a hypothetically perfect safe car. If you crash it, nothing happens. No a metal is bent, nobody's hurt, no bad consequences occur. And the other car is wired up with dynamite so that the first time you hit anything, no matter how gently, it generates a massive explosion. Now, feedback is the notion that drivers would not drive these cars in an identical manner. And I think most people would agree, although we have an empirical data, that people would drive these differently. And they would drive them differently even if the cars were in fact identical, but they believed that one of them you couldn't get hurt in and the other you, you would get massively hurt on first impact. Now, clearly uh, there are not vehicles that vary by this much in real traffic, but every safety intervention places a vehicle somewhere slightly different on that spectrum from the incredibly dangerous to the incredibly safe. 